All right. Take it away, Scott. There you go. But like you said, you know, so you want to be, a, you'd love to be a baseball player. Well, here's the thing, you know, I loved one time I, I was listening to Hank Aaron. He's the number one, you know, he's the big home run king, right? And they asked him, he said, well, you know, about him becoming the king. He says, listen, he goes, do you think I hit two or three baseballs and all of a sudden I become a home run king? He said, I hit tens of thousands of baseballs. And it's no different like with you, right? You can look at, you know, you can look at one of your favorite baseball players and go, man, that's what I want to be. But we don't think about the years, the years, the, the broken bones, the bruises, everything you go through to get there. And it's no different here, right? It's no different here. You're going to get the bumps and bruises. You're going to have those things. Do you have the tenacity to stick with it, right? Do you have that, right? And even with me coming here, you know, I came out of corporate world. I don't know if you all know my story. Um, but my story was, is, you know, I worked at corporate for years. I worked for a very well-known company. And all of a sudden, you know, I said, I can't take it no more. I just hated it, right? And so when I walked, I literally walked at age 56. I left and I'm like, Oh man, what am I going to do? So I took two and a half months. I was looking for the right company. I couldn't find the right company. I was getting pretty discouraged, but I found Cemetery, right? And I found them. And so once I found it and I found out, this is just a plug and play place here, folks. They've got everything for you to build your own agency. You just plug in. That was for me. And there was no way, no way I was going to let this go. And so that was really, really important to me. So I'll be honest with you all. You hit the right place. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be here. But uh, yeah, but I love that. Like you, you like you're saying, Jesse. Yeah, you know, I'd like to be a baseball player, but you just don't go in there and say, "I want to be a pro today." It's no different here, no different. So you have total control of this, right? I mean, that's what I loved about it. When I worked in the corporate world, I didn't have control. I thought I did, but I didn't. Right? They control what you're going to do, what you what you're going to write. The whole better. They give you a little threat. Here, it's what you want to do right? That's the beauty of this. You know, when I started here, I mean, what y'all got now is amazing. What we what we have here at Cemetery, I mean, all the things that we have here, it's just amazing. Back then, I didn't even know what A leads were. I was just writing all these bonus leads uh, until about three months. Jacob told me, why aren't you doing A leads? I said, what are those? But that's how it was back then, right? And so, but we've really grown. But what I love going through the years that I've been here is it was on me, right? It was on me. And I love that because I have ownership. Now, Jacob was there for me, which was great, right? But, you know, he would, if I'd ask a question or, you know, or he'd tell me, you know, if you're doing this, you're going to be there. And I loved it. And, uh, but now what I love is the idea of that we have so many different things. I know um, Casey was on his call today, Jacob's call earlier today, Casey, one of the, the founders. And he was talking about things like that, that what we have right now is beyond what anybody else has. It's just amazing. So, man, I'm just super glad to have you folks. I really am. So with, you know, you know, with both of you, right? And also you, Tyler, man, if you got, look, if you could do timeshares, if you can sell cars, because I know the time and everything you go through with that, you're going to be successful here. There's no getting around. I mean, that to me, it's got to be, I, I, just with you, Tyler, I know the hours you guys put in that. This got to be almost a vacation. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to put those kind of hours in, right? Yeah. Like think that's not fun every week. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So I just, it's, that is so cool. So cool. Yeah. And I forgot to, I just noticed that you texted me this, Scott. So can I go over this just for everyone? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so just for a background and introduction on Scott Mank, um, and I know there's a couple of new faces on the call and even people that have been agents with us probably for some time, there's probably a few things that are, you know, unclear. Um, so we all start at 80% when we come in, right? Um, and to put that in, into perspective, Scott has hit the top of the company. So he's hit the 130 contract rate, which means he's now direct to symmetry and he earns his commissions, or I guess his pay in a totally different way. He gets to basically lead his leaders and make his leaders um, better leaders by leading their teams. Um, what I did want to do, this is a long list, Scott. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so started with Symmetry in April of 2015, and he hit agency owner in March of 2016. So he hit it in a year, right? Or less than a year. Yeah. 
a little under a year and 11 months, um, agency director in September of 2016. So that was very quickly after hitting agency owner. And I didn't know any of this stuff, Scott. 2016 top 10 rookie agency, 2016 number two base shop, 2016 number two agency director, and 2016 20K a week club. And in 2017, he hit region, regional agency director. And that is when, Scott, is that when you have broken out one AO underneath you, I believe? Yeah. Well, at that point, when I become yeah, agency director, you have at least one AO under you. Yep. Okay. Yep. So just to help, you know, for you guys to help, you know, provide a little bit of clarity. I know that we've all seen the corporate overview, but I know that it's a lot of information in the beginning. Um, so I just kind of wanted to touch on all of this stuff really quick, but also because Scott is the greatest, he really is. I'm not just saying that he's just the best mentor. And if you get to speak with him, which you will, when you are moving up in the ranks, um, the knowledge that you will obtain from him is just, oh my gosh, it's just life-changing. And he, he has changed my life in so many ways. And I tell that to them all the time, Scott, <laughs> but, um, as, and aside from that, so in 2019, just to fast forward a bit because his resume is long. Um, in 2019, he was running a four and a half million, uh, APV agency. And then he got impact player of the year for, for 2017, 2019, and 2021. And senior vice president, you hit that in 2019 mm -hmm. and outstanding leadership award in 2019, 2020, 2021, 2021 executive vice president. So is there a position higher than the executive vice president or no, that's. That's when you start getting into managing partners. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like Edward and, yeah. and Marshall. Marshall. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then, uh, but what's the difference between those? Stop. Uh, more of that's when you start having 130s underneath the air. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. And then in 2023, so last year, we um, as an agency, everyone ran uh, 8.2 million for him. And that's not too shabby, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, on track for 2024, do you know what you're on track for for this year? We're, Scott? we're on track as a team. We're on track for about 10 million. Yeah. So, I mean, it's possible, guys. It's possible. And we actually, a lot of new agents, really, they don't have direct access to someone who is at the top of the company. You know, a lot of times there's the um, who you're direct to, right? And then their agency owner or just your agency owner. And that's pretty much all that you have access to. You know, sometimes there's many levels before you have the top of the company person, if that makes sense. Yeah, if I'm explaining that correctly. Um, Scott, do you want to mention anything else? Well, you know, it's interesting going over that, you know, and sometimes I, I try to shorten that thing up a little bit because it is long, but but I do want to say this. You just wanted to brag about yourself. Well, like long, not, you wanted me to read this long 20 page. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm pretty much an introvert, to be honest with you. But no, I think what's yeah, important he, about he's not that, that way at all. Yeah. When you hear all of that. <laughs> If you hear my dogs bark, and I apologize, someone came to the door. Um, but the one thing is, what I want to get out of that, it, it sounds like a lot. But if you said, Scott, how do you do all that? I just was consistent on doing what I needed to do, right? I mean, it, it was so, it, it's, it's very simple. It's, I, I wrote business to pay my bills, and I recruited. And the key to that whole thing was I was just consistent doing it. And I, I honestly, guys, I mean, I would just put my head down and I just did my daily thing, everything, every time I worked. And, and that's what I did. And so when you hear all these things and, these, and act these things like that, that's the accumulation of just doing that, having that good work ethic, you know, finding out what you want in this company. And once you find out what it is, you just go for it and you just be consistent with it. Because I can't believe I've been here for nine years already. I mean, I can't. I mean, you know, becoming an agency owner in a year was like a, a just a blip. But it happens quick. And life does change quick with it. And But that's the key to the whole thing. It's just being that way. And so that's that's the beauty of it. It really is. It's just to just do what you know you need to do. And I'm going to quote uh, Nancy Dominguez. She said to me one day, she says, Scott, 
All I know is I put my head down. I had my mentor in my ear. She was after the dust cleared. And one year later, she goes, I hit agency owner and won a trip. And I said, there you go. You know, that's really, that's really the situation. So, but yeah, but like I said, I'm really excited for this team. Um, you guys are really starting to get it going. I love it. Um, but, you know, one of the things I do want to talk about is, and I, I do this with a lot of my, my folks on, on the team, you know, the different uh, teams that we have here. And, you know, sometimes I always like to talk about things that maybe we can, you know, maybe help you become more successful, right? What What's the certain things we can do? And I love to tell stories and sometimes I got to watch the clock because I'll go forever. But the thing is, I oh, think, okay. yeah, keep me on check. Um, <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, you know, sometimes there's some good things. Sometimes there's things that we need to work on. Right. And, and we always, and I, I bring things up all the time and people always appreciate that and things that you don't know, right. Cause you're learning through the process. And so, you know, um, Anne Marie and I were talking and we had something that come up. And once again, folks, I take a positive in everything, right? And, and it, it typically every time we run into a bump, it gets better. So one of the things, and y'all may not know about this, but we have something called persistency. Okay. And what is persistency? Persistency, what they do is they go through and like one company, what they do is they look at your last 12 months and they want to see how much that business is staying on the books, right? Well, you have to be, certain companies are different, but one company I'll talk about has one where it's at 70%, okay? And so they look at this and they look at it 70% or they look at 65%, right? 65% is the team. What does that mean? Well, once again, that means that if you write $10,000, you have to have 65% of that minimum that's going to stay on the books for at least a year. But it's a rolling 12. So don't worry about it being, okay, it's that year. I got to wait till another year to get it up there. It's a rolling 12. So if you had a month that was kind of a, let's say it was um, July of 23, right? And all of a sudden this year, and, and it was a bad month, right? Maybe you had a 40% persistency. It was really a drag on your persistency. But all of a sudden that next July, 2024, all of a sudden you have an 85% persistency. Well, that's going to, bring the numbers up, right? Because they're going to average out that 12 months. So what happened with y'all is with Americo is you guys are just a little under the persistency. Okay. You're under the persistency. And so what we need to do is we need to get that persistency back up, right? Because it does reflect not only as a team, but on a personal basis. So once again, we all have things that happen as leaders a lot of times we get the brunt of things once in a while, which is fine, right? But in the case of Anne Marie, her situation right now, and I know if you all know it or not, but you know, a couple of you do because I know some of you wrote Americo. But the thing about it is, she's in a position right now. What happened was is the persistency went down. It's under that seventy percent. What does that mean with Americo? Americo specifically, if you go underneath that. You don't have a contract with Americo for a certain amount of time, right? So let me give an example. In the case of this, it's not like she's lost her contract and it's over, right? She's got tons of other companies to work with. But the thing about this is she can get back on this thing in about two months. How do we do that? Well, we just get that persistency better. So what they're going to do is they're going to look at the next month, right? And they're going to look at the next month. And if that persistency goes up, then she's, she's back in the good graces of America. And that's how that works. Now, once again, don't, folks, don't take this bad. I mean, the business is the business, right? We have different carriers that do different things. I mean, I've had a situation with a carrier that I didn't like their contract. So the power of this company, the big the size of this company, we turn around and say, hey, we need to change that or we can't write business with you. They changed it which was awesome, right? So we understand too that they've got rules and regulations, right? That's my rule and regulation. I didn't like what was in there and they changed it. So we know their rules and regulations. And I talked with one of the person, they said, listen, Scott, it'll probably take two months. You guys will be cleaned up. Everything will be back to, to normal again, okay? So how do we raise this, okay? Well, a couple things here. I love Anne Marie. She's been with me a long time. I love her. I want the best for her. I truly do. Okay. So if Anne-Marie does not have a contract, 
what happens is if you write to Americo, she doesn't get a part of that, right? It 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 affects her, right? And we don't want that, right? And so one of the things I brought to her, and and, and I don't feel good about it rolling up to me. I, I really don't, right? Amory's Amory's here for you guys, and I this has happened before, folks. Listen, I I understand this with with one of my folks that's above me. This happened, and I didn't like it, right? Because he was my he's my mentor, and so what happened was I decided, and we decided as a team, we're going to write business somewhere else, right? That's what we did because you can write with anybody. So with Americo, if you know there's a company out there that has the same thing, why not? Now you might be saying, wait, whoa, whoa, Scott, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. So what you're saying is we got to up that. Well, if we're not writing anything with America, how's that going to work? Okay. Well, what's going to happen is the next month moves, whatever bad one was on the other end falls off. The better that there's a better one on the, on the other end, it's going to raise it automatically. And I already know that because I already talked to him about it. We're in that situation. Okay. So, and it's like I said, it's only a few percent off. That's all it is. But I wanted to bring it to you all. I wanted to bring this to you all because you are a team, right? You really are. Um, I always, I love, you know, the insurance agencies. I love them because it's like brothers and sisters and everybody. It's like a family, right? Sometimes, you know, I, trust me, I, my whole group that I have here, it's like my sisters, brothers, mothers, daughters, everybody, right? Sometimes we have a little fit. Sometimes we love each other, but you know what? It all turns out. And I always tell people, you know, Anne Marie and I, we can have a tough conversation, but in the end, she knows she she knows I think the world of her, and she also knows that anything we talk about will end positive. It will end positive. Either one of us will not get off a of Zoom or off of the phone and feel and be upset with each other. And and the story. So what I'm saying is, folks, is and it's. You know, I can't tell you what to do. I can't. Okay. But the thing is, I can say, if you have to write Americo, I get it. Okay. But what I would suggest is letting this thing kind of clean itself up over the next couple of months, you know, maybe right through SBLI or anybody like that. I think I was talking to you, Anne Marie, and who is close to being like Americo? Who, who's a close one? I always treat um, SBLI and Americo pretty much the oh, okay same. okay yeah. and okay. you know i would do sbli because it's a lot faster of an e-application and you can just enter it into navigator if it doesn't work out you can just pivot to another carrier i mean sure. that's that's the thing like Amer choosing america or choosing sbli it's just like choosing an airline you know why southwest well that's why they tell you, thank you so much for choosing Southwest, because we know you have many options when you're flying, right? So us as agents and as a team, we have a lot of options. We don't have only Americo. And for a short time being, I think that's not a big deal at all. It's a really small hiccup. Um, and it's something to learn from, really, because there's going to be a lot of things that that we cannot control that will be adversity thrown in your face and you can, you know, just run away and quit, or you can just rise up and face it and just move forward. And that's what I've chosen to do. And that's what me, Scott and I have chosen to do for the agency. And I know that you guys will help support that as well. Um, but with SBLI, that is a product that was, it's a proprietary product, meaning that it's only available for symmetry agents to use. And so when they made that product, Symmetry said, we want this, 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 and this. We want highest commissions possible for our agents. We wanted to issue faster than anyone else in the business. And they do. And they have the highest comp on, the, on those products. Um, and that they want to make sure that you're going to take care of the agent and the client um, equally. It's basically the best of both worlds um, with it being instant approval. So it's pretty amazing. The, the only difference really is the uh, the living benefits. The critical illness is not included, but that's something that most people don't even notice or worry about, you know. Um, and I don't know what they raise the base amounts to, but Symmetry is always giving feedback to SBLI because why? It's because it's their product. So they can change it 
if they're hearing feedback from symmetry agents about something that they don't like with the proprietary product, guess what? The carriers will change it like this um, for us. And so we have that competitive edge to show that product to our clients. And it also was designed to be very, very, very competitive, way more competitive than every other carrier in the business. So not only do we have access to something that most agents don't have access to, right? We have something that is really unique and specifically designed by our founders with SBLI. So, I mean, I I, I love SBLI. I switched a lot of people over from other carriers to SBLI when they came out with it. Um, but yeah, I think that those two are probably were my favorite, America and SBLI. Yeah, no, SPL, I to be honest with you, if I was still in the field, that's what I've been writing. And I here's what I love about it. Like you said, you you hit on something I think is really cool with this is the idea that you'll know instantly if they're going to be approved or not. If they're not, immediately you're going to find out different companies you can go with. So that's really, really neat. I mean, talking about automated, that's that's really good. So, but that's yeah, absolutely. Now, for y'all that's written any in the last few days or whatever. That's in the queue, right? I mean, it, it's it is what it is. Um, that you know, it'll go. It's and let y'all know. There's all that's taken care of. So if anybody's written America, it will go through now. And once again, if something happens like this, like a contract problem or something like that, it gets kind of lo a log jam there. But we're all taken care of now. But and I do want to give Anne Marie kudos here. You know, she's she's right. Some people would take this as a horrible thing and oh my gosh, this is terrible and throw a fit or whatever. And but she handled it very well. Well, she she understands, right? It's it is a part of, of America. And um, but like I said, we all we there's great, great companies we have here, a lot of them. And so it's not like we work for one company, uh, you know, like you're maybe you're working with uh just mutual of Omaha, you just sell mutual of Omaha products. Uh, you have an array of different products to sell here. Now, what we like to do is make sure that we we use the ones we use, um, you know, typically the top five. Uh, the, and I'm going to be a little, I, the reason why I like that is because you, there's a chance you're going to win one or two trips that way too, right? If you've got it spread out all over the place, it's hard to win a trip. So, you know, it's not about just trips, it's taking care of your client. But I can tell you right now, with the, the four or five companies that we have that usually take care of about 95% of everyone's needs, you're not going to hurt anybody on any of them. So that's a good thing. Um, but other than that, yeah, and like I said, I talked to Andrew. He is our rep with uh, Americo. And he told me, Scott, you know, you guys can get out of this thing in a couple months. I'm like, well, that's fine. That's fine. But that's why I really wanted to take the time with you all today and just go over that. Um, any any questions? Any questions? Any okay. questions? No questions, Scott. I did want to mention something before I forget it. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, shoot. Oh, yes. To work on the persistency with Americo, um, just to remember to follow up with that business, right? Make sure it gets taken to the finish line. It gets issued. If there's any amendments that need to be signed, get them signed, right? Make sure that it stays on the books and that you look into it. If you see that for some reason that someone's payment did not go through or it's in danger of lapsing due to non-payment, call that client and try to salvage that piece of business. Because if we don't, that's going to hurt our persistency. Um, so do a three month right policy review, do a six month policy review, whatever you can. I mean, you should be doing that for all of your business, but especially with America, if we want to have access back to America products sooner than later, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you just hit it on the head. I was going to say that that's one thing we should be doing, right? Is making sure that we're taking care of not only not only your situation with your business, but the clients. Um, and we do run into this once in a while. And it used to be a big deal. It's not anymore. But we used to have people where all of a sudden they would get something from a company. They're saying, hey, this this person dropped the policy. Well, nine out of 10 agents, they, they're they like, oh, I'm not going to call because I, it must be a terrible situation, whatever. Most of the time, folks, they change their checking account or they check their they change their you know, their checking account, right? They they change that. That's all it is. But people will be so scared to go and find out what's going on. I, man, when someone would drop with, I, I called them. I'm like, what's going on? Well, I don't know if we can afford it right now. Well, okay. So what do you, how, what do you feel you could afford? 
Well, I can afford this much. I say, can you do that on a long-term basis? Because this is what this is for. Yeah, I can do that. And then we get a change. You're like, well, this is fun. Um, I asked in the chat, what are a few best oh, practices sorry. to make sure our personal persistency stays, you know, up? I know you guys touched on, you know, doing three months, six months, you know, nine month reviews of the policy. Um, is there anything else that, you know, we could take to make sure that it does stay high? Just those things that I mentioned earlier, Tyler. Yeah, policy reviews. If you see something that lapses or is in danger of lapsing, call the client. And usually you the number one thing also is in the benefit of the client is if let's say their policy lapsed due to non-payment and then somebody dies and they call you frustrated and furious, right? Um, that you didn't tell them that their policy ended, right? Due to non-payment and someone died and now it doesn't pay out a death benefit because of what happened, you know? So our job doesn't end after you sign a policy, right? After you help that family, there's a reason why we are paid so high. So if we have to pivot for a decline, guess what? That's normal. The, the, the carriers know that. There's a lot of work in what we do and the job isn't over right? After you sign a policy with them, you are their agent. So if they need anything, you have to be available for them. You should be calling them for policy reviews, right? To check in because a lot of times you can easily sell two, three more policies with your current clients. They are the easiest clients to sell to, you know? Um, but I, I just want to put that out there because there's a lot of little things like, okay, I set an appointment. I called the appointment and and then they didn't answer. They blocked me. Okay, well, how many other appointments do you have, right? Because the system, right, the four keys to success says that you need to have 12 to 15 appointments a week, right? And if you're part-time, eight to nine. So with one appointment and one appointment blocking you, that, I mean, that's a non-issue. I mean, the numbers are the way they are and you can't bend them in your favor, which is the good news here, right? It's a fair playing field for anybody. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You just have to be willing to put in the dials. And if you outwork somebody, you will learn skill, right? Uh, the Jim Rohn quote is that what you lack in skill, you make up for in numbers when you're new at something. So you need that constant repetition, you know? Sorry, Scott. We were like just doing like a side chat, waiting okay. for you to unfreeze and then I think uh, we don't know what happened, but that's I'm okay. not sure what happened there, but not I'm back. <laughs> so, yeah. but you know, it's, and once again, it's just taking care of your own business. Right. I mean, that's, that's all there is to that. And, um, but other than that, I, let me ask you, I know probably all of you are new here. I'm thinking everyone on here is new. Um, so none of you have been to the conference, right? Never had that. Oh man. I'll tell you right now, folks, just to tell you a little bit about me when I started two, 2015, I started in April. And, and I'm going to touch on that because it's just so important. Um, I remember uh, when I was hired on here and I asked them, they were talking about a conference. I'm like, oh, you guys have conferences? And they go, yeah, we have two of them. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding, right? Because when I worked with corporate, I hated it. I hated these hype things, right? And I couldn't stand. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I right off the bat, you know, I thought, well, I'm just going to get going here. Well, by by time April, May, May, June came around. I just kept hearing about it, right? They just kept talking about it. I'm like, man, there must be something to this. And the more and more I heard about it, I'm like, man, I can't wait to get there. So I remembered going to my first conference. It was in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And it was the greatest thing I could have ever done. It really was because a couple of things here. I was very jaded, very upset, didn't really trust many people because I, li I lived in that corporate world. And on top of that, never realized it, but that really reflected on my wife. She was very much the same, right? She would go to these meetings with me and she knew not to say anything, or, you know. And, and when I would talk to people, I would tell you, I would, Jesse, I would tell you something in five minutes. And after we were done, you said, boy, Scott really talked a lot, but I have no idea what he's talking about, right? That's what we did in the corporate world because everybody was against each other. Everyone was fighting against each other, right? That's how it was. And so when I got here at Cemetery, man, did I learn quick. Man, I mean, I'm, I think I told you this, Amory, when I first walked in, it was like I saw people hugging. I'm like, what is this? You know, what is going on here? 
And so um, I remember my wife and I went there. I had to make sure she was there because I wanted her to understand. I felt really great about the company. And she grilled Jacob, Jacob and Marshall pretty good, and they handled it well. But, you know, one of the things that what I loved about that first conference was is after we were done that night when we went back to the room, she turned around to me and she said, Scott, this is a godsend. She got it, right? She understood what it was about. And that's the key to this is when you go to that conference, you're going to learn the structure of the company. You're going to see, I mean, everything about the company. You're going to get to meet everybody. I tell everybody, get a hit list. That's what I did. I had a, five people I wanted to talk to. It, it doesn't even have to be on your team. doesn't have to be in this hierarchy. It could be anybody, right? And I did that. And I put that hit, uh, I put that, uh, hit list together and I talked to all five of them. And it was the greatest thing I ever did. Ashley Harris was the first one I talked to. I walked up to her and I said, hey, I know we ain't got time, but I would like to set a time to sit down and talk to you. She was, let's do it now. And she talked to me for like 10 minutes. It was great. And so that's what you can do there. And on top of that, and here's the big one. That's why I call this a workshop. First day, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn about the company, the new systems we're bringing out. There's some stuff that's coming out, guys. It's going to be amazing. But the second day is your classes. So what you want to do is whatever you've done right now and up to, if you're saying, you know, I love the idea of building a team, or hey, I'd love to be a, a $30,000 runner. I'd love to do this, right? Get in those classes. You've got the best of the best that are teaching these classes. I used to teach the, um, the, the, the recruiting class. I loved it because we were top recruiting, right? I was top recruiter. And so I would teach these folks until this, even this day, people tell me they love that class. They're great classes because these classes that you take are going to catapult you to the next conference. It's going to help you build the, for that bridge to the next conference. And man, I learned that right off the bat. The only thing I regretted, Anne-Marie, was I was sitting there with my wife listening. And I said, oh, I messed up. She goes, what's wrong? I said, I didn't bring anybody. I didn't bring anybody, right? Well, I did the next time, I brought nine people. The next time I had 49. The third time we had over 100 people there. And that's exactly what it is. And, these, and they love it, right? We got people now that are agency owners, everybody. I mean, they're all here, right? And that's what's so important about it. And I really wanted to touch on that because I know a couple of you are from California. Um, you know, you might be close to Colorado, but here's the thing. You know, I can tell you some great stories about people who drove across the country. Some of the funny stories. I mean, I, we had a couple of guys, four of them stayed in a hotel. They snuck in. So they, there's only supposed to have two. They snuck in. One of them is a 130 as we speak today. But it's whatever it takes for you to get in there and help you get your team moving, right? Or, or yourself moving. But there's never been a time, and I tell people this, if you felt like it wasn't worth it, please come to me and tell me. And the only thing I ever used to always get, Anne Marie's, they said, I wish it was another day longer because everyone's getting together. You, you have fun, you learn, but man, we get things done, right? And I think that is just so, so important. And I, you know, once again, I only bring this up because I know how it was important to me. And I knew that if I didn't go to this thing, I might not be here today, but it's that, that important. And like I said, if you see me there, man, Tap me on the shoulder. We'll talk, right? I mean, one time we had a big old circle one time out there and we were talking, had a big talk out there. But, or if I'm talking with someone, still come up. You'll probably learn something from that conversation. But please, please don't, you know, don't be a secret agent. Be there, come up there and talk to me or, you know, talk to Anne Marie, all of us, right? Because we're going to be there to help you out. So I really wanted to touch on that. But yeah, like I said, today I kind of wanted to get to know the team a little more. I was talking to Anne Marie. She said, I got some new folks. I love to meet the new folks. And so, but does it, does anyone have any questions to me of me? Anything at all? Don't be shy. Deborah has questions and Tyler does too. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Tyler, I don't know if you want to ask. We can ask Mink. Um, so he wants to know if there's any other ways to um, keep your persistency in the green other than what we already discussed. Yeah, you know, it's just what we discussed. It's just taking care of your business. <laughs> you know, it really is. It's just to take it, you know, if you're, one of the things you want to do, and, and I get it as new people, new agents, I get this. You know, it's, you go in, you make a sale, you know, especially when we used to go to homes, right, Amory? You go in there, 
you're right. They said yes. So you heard them do an application. You're like, I got to get to the car because they're probably going to chase me and say, no, I decided not to. They don't <laughs> do that. right? <laughs> and if they do, you never did have them as a customer. Right. So what you want to do is you want to take that time with them. Right. You, you know, you're going to go through the process with them. I, I used to do this. Amory. I call them the next day. Hey, I just want to let you know I had a great time with y'all. I mean, really you're super nice folks. And I would get referrals once in a while doing that. Right. But I want to let them know I'm out there. I would also, you know, text them. I would text them, hey, I just wanted to text you to see how things are going. Oh, by the way, I wanted to let you know, I just want to ask you a question. If something happens to you, have you, have you taken care of your living death yet? And I left it at that. Folks, you have no idea how many people text me back on that. <laughs> like, Scott, what is that? <laughs> what are you talking about, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just was worried if you took care of that. What that means is that if you became, if you got hurt, right? If you got injured, hurt, uh, or, or you got ill and you couldn't go to work. And then all of a sudden you're laying on your couch and you're laying there and you're worrying about how am I going to pay my house payment? How am I going to pay my car payments? Folks, that's the living debt. And we're like, well, what's that? What's, how do you take care of that? I go, with a disability policy. I wrote more disability policies than you can imagine. But there's little, and I would drip on people, right? The next month I might talk to them about, hey, can I show you a way that you can pay zero on your health insurance? Zero out of pocket. I'm like, wait a minute. And they would, and they, you know, because everyone's got, you know, health insurance, they text me, Scott, how you do that? And I would show them. And we'd sell them critical illness. And these are just, instead of just saying, hey, uh, by the way, I just want to let you know we sell disability insurance. I wouldn't get me going, you know, unless I really needed it. But if you give them something like that, it makes them think for a minute. They're like, whoa, whoa, living death. What is he talking about? It was one of my greatest ones. I mean, I loved it. I wrote so much disabil disability. And we got great disability plans here. And so, uh, but those are things that, you know, that you want to do because what you're going to find and, you know, Tyler, the one thing that you're going to learn here is when you're getting a hold of folks, think of it this way. Your goal should be to get 50 to 100 customers. 50, minimum 50, get 100, right? We always talk about, you know, Project 100, get 100 of them in a year, right? Why is that? Because you want to make them clients. And the key to that is as a customer, there's about a 75% they're going to stay with you if you write one case, right? But then if you write another one, now they become a client and they're going to stick with you 84% chance. If you write more than two and above, 98% chance that they will stay with you. They And then also a client will purchase from you at, on average four times. I got one client's purchase from me seven times. And the last time I made over $4,000, he asked me a question about a bunch of cash he had in an old policy. We rolled it into an IUL. And I said, this is what it'll do for you. He goes, is it good? I said, yeah. He goes, then we'll do it. I mean, it's there, it, you don't have to worry about yes or no anymore. They're just like, yeah, whatever you think, Scott, let's get it done. So that's really how you do it. You make your customers into clients. But by doing that, if you drip on them, you, you bring up things, just say hi. Send them a, you know, I used to do, you know, now you can do it online, but I used to hand write and send Thanksgiving cards to my clients. Who sends Thanksgiving cards? Everybody sends Christmas cards, but they always remembered the Thanksgiving cards or the Easter cards. Or I used to, you know, now I got it automated that they get birthday cards, right? So that's what you can do. So that is the ultimate way of being able to keep your, keep your folks. Does that help, Tyler? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And Deborah, you, you said that you had two questions, right? Oh, great. Okay. Oh, yes. So my one question was, what roadblocks did you hit? And did you set goals and have setbacks? And how did you overcome those setbacks? Oh, man, I love that question. You know, I came in here. One thing that when I came in here, I think I'm sure Anne-Marie remembered. I may have told Anne-Marie this. But one of the things that was important for me is and I, I remember having a conversation with Jake, Jacob and, and uh, Brandon, one of the owners. They knew I was in a business a long time. I told them, hey, listen, guys, I'm going to come here. I'm a clean slate. I checked my if there if I have an ego, it's checked. I'm not bringing it in. I'm going to learn because you guys have an awesome process. 
And about, I remember when I was about eight or nine months into this, I was getting close to hitting an agency owner. I remembered Brandon and Jacob came to, came to up to me in a meeting. They said, hey, we want to talk to you. I said, what's going on? I said, well, we're just happy about what you're doing. I said, well, I appreciate that. They And he looked at me and Brandon goes, you know what? He goes, I never believed a word you said. I go, when? He goes, when you told me you were going to be a clean slate. He goes, most people who are licensed that long, they've got their baggage and they're going to do it their way and all. I said, no, I wasn't going to do that. And he told me, he says, you know, you're one in a million. You're one in a million. And we do that, right? We run into people who are licensed and a lot of them have baggage, right? They've had a tough time with a couple of companies, right? They have that. And I get that, especially a guy like me that's been in business for 30 years. They're thinking, what's with this guy? Why is he leaving after 30 years, right? Now, if you've been in the business for a year or two, I get it. That's never an issue. But someone as long as I've been, you know, they, they understood that. So with me, to go to your question, you know, one of the things I thought was really interesting with me, it was, I think if there's anything that was a little tough for me was getting out of that mindset of the what the corporate world does and what we do, okay? I was always... In, in all honesty, and Jacob knew this, right? Because I had to be honest with him. I didn't trust anybody. I was the most untrusting person you would ever meet. And that's what corporate made me, right? So when I came here, I was excited, ready to go, but I didn't trust anybody. I still didn't have a trust with Jacob yet. I, I was happy with him, right? I mean, he would tell me things and I would do it and whatever. But it took me probably six or eight months to have that trust which is longer than usually most people. And he used to joke with me once in a while. He goes, hey, Mr. Untrusting, how you doing now? You getting better? You know, and we would kid about it. But, you know, and like I said, my wife was the same way because of the business. But that was something that, that was a big hurdle that I had to get over. I really did because it was either I figure that out or I'm not going to make it here, right? I, I had to finally, you know, I joke about it now. If Jacob would call me and said, hey, the sky's yellow with green polka dots, I go, yeah, I'm not going to check. I, I, I believe you, right? And so, but that's what happened. So that was a big hurdle for me because it was, I could feel the stress of that that was on me, just trying to figure that out, right? So really what I did was I just kind of dove in the business. I said, hey, look, he's there. I'm going to take off. If they're telling me these are the numbers I need to do, I'm going to do them, right? The one thing that, that, that I always say is there's, there's certain things I can control and things I can't control. I can't control Jacob. I can't control Marshall, right? But I can control what I can control. And that is writing business and recruiting, because those are my two things that I wanted to do, right? And that was that was clear and no doubt about it. Now, J Jacob would direct me on where he thinks I'll be after a few months or whatever, but that's what we did. So that worked for me. Um, as far as anything, a roadblock, man, that is that is a great question because I bring this up typically in my uh, when I get on there with my new agents uh, meeting. Uh, you know, I hit agency owner, right? And, and I, I hit it in like less than a year, which was great, right? I just did what they told me to do. This is what you do. But then it got beyond that, right? Now I got my agents. Now I'm trying to figure this road out. Now you got a roadmap. Folks, you got the summit. It, it it helps you, right? You got a guy like me. I'm 130. The reason why I'm 130 is not for an ego or nothing else. It's because I knew once I become a 130, I can tell you all how to do it. And I can even tell you some roadblocks I'd rather you go around, right? See, that was my goal. Because I remembered back when I was doing this, I had no idea. But I started learning it as I went. Help with Jacob. Jacob was there too. But there was things I had to learn. So in 2017, early 2017, I struggled. I, it was like I hit a roadblock. And I just, it was like things were stale. I couldn't get it moving. I couldn't figure this out, right? So I was talking to Marshall. Marshall said this. He says, Scott, what are you reading? And I go, well, Sports Illustrated. You know, I was kind of, and he's like, that's not funny, right? I, okay, I'm not reading anything, right? And so... He says, Scott, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start looking, you know, start developing yourself. Not only your business, but your personal, right? And that's what we do here. And I'm like, uh, okay, you know, but I believed him, right? And he goes, well, you know, Scott, what, what, what's going on? I said, I don't know. Maybe it's my structure. I'm trying. He goes, look, I know a great book to read. And I said, okay. And it was Miracle Morning. And I got to meet Hal Alright. He's an awesome guy. And I said, okay. But he goes, but before you start reading it, here's what I want you to do. 
A, I want you to just text me a little paragraph or two on what did you get out of that chapter and how are you going to implement that in your business? I said, I can do that. So I started doing that. So I would read a chapter every morning. I would, I would do every morning. And I started learning this. And this is what I learned really quick. My problem was I was all over the place and I didn't know I was. Reading that book helped me become very structured. I, I always thought I was a very structured person. And I am. But it helped me become very structured here. So I knew what to do on my day every day. I never got like I love to go to the gym. I'm a gym rat. I go to the gym every morning, but there's times I can't go. Why? Because I'm fiddling around with something else and this and that. And all of a sudden it gets too late. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'll go, I'll go later in the morning. And guess what? I don't go. So then in the afternoon, I'm like, oh, I'll go this afternoon. I don't go. I'll go in the evening. I don't go. And then guess what? Now I'm now I'm upset. I'm mad because it's something I like to do. Right. And so I found this to happening in my business. And so I start reading this book. I'm like, wait a minute. This is how I can set things up, right? I got so much done before eight o'clock in the morning. I mean, I had things that I literally would call because I was central. I could call Eastern. I could get a hold of, of carriers. I would find out where my business is, what's going on. It takes me 20 minutes, right? You're only going to write two, three, four, maybe apps a week. It didn't take that long. Then things started getting together. Then I found out it, I wasn't going crazy trying to figure out how do I recruit? How do I write business? And on top of that, how do I work with agents? Right. I knew what to do on I, my my schedule was so perfect for me. Right. And some of my people use my schedule. And I had one guy tell me, Scott, he says, how, how do you write 10 grand a, a week and recruit? You did. I said, here's my schedule. He started using it. And so he does today. But it's a schedule that worked for me. And it was all because of that self-development. And man, once that happened, I was I would go to Marshall. Hey, Marshall, here's where I am today. What is a good book for me to read? That's what I would do. I'd read. And, it's, and, and I always sent them. I got a young lady right now that hit agency owner in a year. And I asked her, I said, what do you want to be? She goes, I want to be an agency owner in a year. I said, well, first off, you're going to have to figure out how to do that. She goes, that's true. I said, you know, you need to start self-developing yourself. Be ready for that. She started reading every day, including Saturday and Sunday. She sent me what she got out of that chapter and how she was going to implement it. In a year, she'd become AC owner. Today, she's been, she's almost ready to start hitting um, uh, agency director. And she still sends me those. I just got another one this morning. And I read them. And why is this important? And, and, and don't think about this just for you, right? This is so important. And I learned this being on the other side. This person's sending me these things, right? And while I'm reading them, I'm like, I get where she's going. I get where she wants to go. And so it's so much easier for me to mentor her. It's, it's I mean, it's amazing. She makes my life easier. Her life's easier. And she's running up the track. And it's really a cool way to do that. And I hope that answered your question. It, it, it there was another part of that too, wasn't there? I think. Deborah? Yes. No, that was <laughs> that was amazing. Um the the last part was just how'd you overcome that? Um getting yeah. over those set. set you know, facts. I look at some of the things, you know, it's kind of interesting. You know, it's it's interesting. I'll take this on a two-part. Um, one being just myself and me and the team, right? Um, with myself, you know, it was, you know, I, I want to say too, my wife has been a, a huge support for me. I think if folks, if you're married or have, or, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever you have, if you have that support, that is awesome. It's worth everything. I truly mean that. So when I was going, right, I was trying to figure this thing out. I never worked with leads. Never worked with any of these other companies. It was a very, it was an interesting time, right? And I think that was the time where I was trying to figure all this out. And it was just having my wife there, right? She knew that I had to make, you know, my goal was 15 appointments a week. That's what I did. I love her for this. You know, I would be, you know, in my office, I'd be in there making phone calls, couldn't wait to start making the phone calls. I would come out at 12. I'm like, hey, I got my 15 appointments. Or I'm like, hey, I got nine, right? But she was this type, I'd walk out. I remember one day I was going to get a glass of water. She was, how many appointments you got? I go, I got eight. She was, what are you doing out of the office? 
I said, my goodness, Warden. I said, I'm trying to get some water. Is that okay? But that was what was great about it, right? Was that support. So as a new person in this, you're going to have frustrations that if you don't have that support person, your mentor is, right? And, and I've mentored many of people that way that just didn't have that support. And I was there to have these great conversations. Uh, on the other side, right? On the other side of being an agency owner, right? And going through some of the problems. Like, you know, we had COVID, right? With, which was a big one. Um, coming out new as an agency owner, trying to figure that out. The beauty of that was, is I learned that, yes, I'm a mentor, but I am not a boss and I am not a manager. I am not. Tyler, I'm not going to go to you and say, hey, Tyler, you wrote 8,000 last month. You know, could you pick it up a little bit? Maybe you ought to do 10. There's no reason why I can't believe you can't do 10, right? See, that's it's all about me. It's not about you, Tyler. What I love about this is if Tyler wants to do a certain thing, I'm there to help. Can I enhance him? Yes, I can to help him move where he wants to go, right? I get that. But the one thing I learned here was that I was not the boss, right? And I was always willing to have great conversations with my folks on, it was never my agency. It's our agency. And it's always been that way with me from day one. This is our agency. And if I and I got some super smart folks on this team, I got some great people on this team, but I will go to certain people on my team. If I know that Anne Marie is awesome at uh, social media, right? I'll, I'm going to come to her about it. Or if I go to certain people in certain situations, or maybe there's an issue and maybe, you know, I'm, I'm going to come to them. I want them to give me feedback and see what they think, right? And I do it all the time. When we had COVID, we're trying to figure out these lead things and who we're going to get leads from. I had, a, I had a group of three or four people that worked with me. And we worked this thing out, right? And so that's what we do. And you've got to be able to, to be able to do that. Uh, I learned that really quick, that if you if you put people involved, if they're, you know, it, it's it's just a great feeling to understand that we're all in this thing together. Jacob and I, you know, I, when he was running for to get to the top of the company, we busted our rear to get him there. The bottom line, when we did that, we ended up rolling out three more agency owners. We had another director come out. I forget how many key leaders we had because the trickle down effect really affected this agency. So that was what was really important. But if anything, to any kind of overcoming anything, it was more of I didn't try to put it all on my shoulders. Because I know Anne-Marie understands me. She knows I could have the worst day in the entire world. But if I'm going to have to talk to Anne-Marie here in a minute, when I get on that phone, she would never know I'm having the worst day in the world. She never will, right? And that's another thing you need to do is make sure that don't bring any burden on your team, right? Don't put a burden on your team. But have them included in things, right? Include your team. Have these things. And as a team... We're going to work it out. Look, when I missed, I went for my run for 130. We missed it the first time. We missed it by $5,000, right? Jacob called me and he goes, man, I got to talk to you about something. I go, what's that? He goes, well, it's going to be tough to tell you. I said, what? He goes, well, you know, you, you missed it by 5,000. I say, I already know that. He goes, oh, yeah. I go, yeah. And he goes, man, I'm sorry. It didn't, ha it didn't work out. I said, no. I said, the team just wasn't ready. And he thought that he used to that's the greatest thing. He goes, well, Scott, I thought maybe you're going to get upset. And I said, when have I ever gotten upset? This is a business. Look, the team wasn't ready. I remember getting together with the team. I said, guys, we missed it, but hey, it's okay. We're going to do it again. This next three months, we probably won't, but the following three, I know you guys are going to kill it. Oh, not this team. They, they took it personal. They crushed it the next three months. And that was probably the most proudest I've ever been in it with this team. But it's a team effort. And I think if anything, if you have that mentality, that thought, and that's it's easy for me because that's how I've always been, right? If you have that in you and don't be the boss and, and don't boss, you're going to be highly successful here. Allow everybody to let you, you, you know, let, like with me, I let everyone tell me, hey, Scott, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. And that's what we do. We move you forward that way. And, and I hope that helped. I got the heart. I love that. I'll take that heart. That's great.
Well, very good. Well, I don't know how much time we got, but anyone else have any other questions at all? I think we're good, Scott. Yeah. Raquel, so nice to see your beautiful face. I was like, oh my gosh, why would you hide it? That beautiful face. Oh I'm notorious for keeping my camera off. Um, what? Like no, said, turn Scott, it on. With, with corporate America, I'm also jaded. Um, you know, that is so funny, Raquel. Me too. Mm -hmm. You know, I always usually say that I, you know, I look on here and I look to see who's not on. And a lot of times I'll say, Hey, come on, come pop on. Right. Man. Mm -hmm. I love seeing people. I'm, I'm really big on body language. Uh, okay. My attitude is, you know, with, with me, when we'd have these, I've been, I, I, Jacob gave me a hard time. I'd show up on it with a, with a tie on. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just, but I'm used to that, right. That corporate mm -hmm. world kind of thing. <laughs> but, um, but no, I love it. So Raquel, I get it. What, what where did you work, Raquel? Um, I was in tech sales. My oh, okay. most recent job was uh, for a company called Soft Choice. It's an IT oh, okay. seller. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what made you move from there? Uh, well, my boss and I did not see eye to eye. He was a, a teammate of mine, and okay. then became our manager. And that transition just didn't go very well. Mm. So. Um, ventured out to, to find something new and yeah. actually ended up trying to get back into tech sales. I applied to probably over 300 places mm -hmm. and it's just a really saturated market. So went down many, many rabbit holes of a lot of, you know, those scam companies that are like get, get rich quick sort of. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I found symmetry and of course I was a little trepidatious about it because I had yeah. been fooled many times at that point. Um, but no, I'm, I'm happy to be here and I'm excited about it. That's great. You know, it really, you know, and I do say, I truly mean this when I say this, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, if you get, if you're newly licensed, we know, not me, I mean, this mm -hmm. is industry wide, that if you get your license, you're going to move to seven different companies before either A, you find your home or B, you're out of the business and mm -hmm. you hit it the first. So if this is the first time you've been licensed, Y'all hit it the first time. I mean, I wish I could say that. Uh, yeah, but, I have to say I agree with you on that. Yeah, it's yeah. it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, but no, happy to have you here. Great to have you here. Thank you. Absolutely. And it, like I said, we you know we do have we do have a lot of fun here. We get things done. We have fun. We truly do. But you know, I love doing calls like this. I love getting to, to meet y'all because I remembered it was it seemed like it was just yesterday that I'm exactly where you are today. I truly mean that. And what you're saying, Raquel, that what I love about it here is you don't have a boss, mm -hmm. right? Here's the thing that's great about this, Raquel. You can get bigger than Anne-Marie. You can grow bigger than me. You you can do that, right? It's your business. It's not, it, this is not an um, MLM or it's not It's not a pyramid. It's where you can't grow and you can't go above. No, mm -hmm. this is an agency, this is no different when I was with the other company and I, it was mutual home hall. I was a top 10 agency there. Right. And the thing is I could, I, I was stuck. Right. I mean, I could grow, but then I, I had this ceiling over my head, which is my boss. Right. Which he had a boss, right. The only way I could move up is either he died, retired, whatever, got fired. That's the only way I could do it. And I, I'm not, I didn't want to be one of the good old boys. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hated about that business. That's, you know, I, I was a good hard worker. You know, I built that agency up to number one in his area only to be, Hey, you need to do more. Right. And I just, I just didn't like that. Yep. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So here you got the freedom of being what you want to be. And that's what I love. Yep. Well, very good. Well, thank you, Scott. And hello, Admir. Nice to see your face as well. <laughs> and nice to meet you. I don't I haven't met you yet. <laughs> His upline is Hi guys. Hey, how you doing? Oh, love the hat. Puerto Rico. I'm hey, hey, you, you. Yep. I, well, I was I was at my mom, but I was listening all the time. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. I love it. Love that hat. Very yeah, is that good. your your Friday hat? Uh yeah, I that's his everyday hat. This is a <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, very I, I good. To the Tyler, he didn't say nothing bad about me. I told him to leave the bad stuff out. 
good. <laughs> well, I love it. Love it. Well, like I said, folks, this is what I love. I love getting together with everybody and, and just having a great conversation. Like I said, I remembered it like it was yesterday when I first started. And I just, you know, I made a decision that, you know, I'm I'm going to, I got what I wanted to do. And I, I knew I wanted to get to the top of the company. I loved it when Jacob said, why do you want that? And I guess he thought, I thought, well, I just, you know, went a big age or whatever. I said, no, I said, I want to be able to show people how to get there. And he thought that was a great thing because not a lot of the agencies don't have that, right? They don't have, and, and I'm just, this age, I'm, I'm one of them. And I'm, I'm proud to be that because that's going to help you all. And, and I, I love that. Yep. That's great, Scott, that you show how to, you're successful, but you can show someone else how to be successful as well. You don't exactly. come across too many people like that. Well, and, and I love that. I mean, it's, you know, I always tell folks, you know, Jacob talked to me about that. He, he said the same thing. He says, man, he goes, it's great to hear that way. I said, hey, I, I, I sleep well at night, right? But, you know, and I'm joking, but it's it's the way to be. You know, I've been very fortunate. I was very fortunate to get a, an opportunity here. I was 56 when I was down and out. I, I mean, I was making money. You know, the two things we talk about, broke or broken. I was broken. I mean, I was so, my wife told me, Scott, I don't care if you want to become a garbage man. If it makes you happy, please do it, right? Because I was just very unhappy. And so when I got here, I thought, oh, this is it. This is it, right? I, I think I found my home. And so I was very excited. So at age 56, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I walked away. You know, now I'm, I'm getting close to 65, right? So by age 60, I hit the top of the company. I don't worry about Medicare, I don't even know. I don't care. Right. I went up there. I just turned 65. I went up there because I, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, social security. So I went up there to get my Medicare. And so the guy looks at me and he says, okay, he was, what are you I said, well, you know, I'm 65. I need to get on Medicare. He goes, what about your social security? I said, I don't know. You know, what is it? How much is it? Right. So he started looking at it. I love this folks. This is what you want. He looks at the screen. He looks at me and goes, well, you make too much money. Just like that, I go, what do you mean? He goes, we can't give it to you. You know, even on my Medicare, they charged me an extra $300. Was it $300 a month on the Medicare because I make too much money? So, they're, they're you know, I have to pay more because of that. And you know what? I'm okay with it. I'll, I'll take that trade off any day. Right? I'll take that trade off any day. I don't worry about Social Security. So, Social Security, when I get it, and I'm going to get it like at 67 or 68, I'll just take that and pay for the, pay whatever I got to pay on that Medicare, right? That's the, folks, that's the beauty, right? We talk about time and freedom, you know, freedom and, and, and all that. That's my freedom. And this is my freedom right here. If y'all let me, I'll talk another hour because I love it. I have the freedom of doing that now, right? And I have the freedom of helping you all become successful, and that's what I love. That's that's my that's my dream. Some people like to golf. Some like to fish. I love talking to people on this team, and I love it. Yep. That's and awesome. I appreciate yeah. each and every one. Yeah. yeah, and everyone at Symmetry is like any everyone who's very successful is anything but ordinary, and it, they are someone to truly look up to. And they're very humble. They're not about flashy things. Like a lot of people in the industry are just all about, you know, the flashy stuff and showing off their money that way. And people at Symmetry don't do that. They give back, they help out. Uh, they don't hold secrets. They don't steal downlines and move them into other people's downlines from out, out from underneath them. Um, they just act with integrity, which is what you want, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's very humbling, you know, especially like I said, when you're broken, broken, it, you know, it becomes humbling, right? It, whatever it is takes you to be happy. But, you know, I mean, we give a lot, you know, I mean, I, I love it. You know, I go down to the grocery store and I'll see a little old lady or something like that. And all of a sudden I'll, I'll say, I got that, you know, I'll pay for her groceries. And the one that gets shocked more than anybody is the cashier, the little lady. She's happy. The cashier's like, what are you doing? You know? Uh, I'm starting to learn not to do this so much because I think they got me figured out. So it's just got to <laughs> like, oh, oh that's the guy. That's the guy. So get get close to him. He'll pay for your groceries. Oh, right? he hates the money bags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, that, but that's the beauty is I love paying. I just like giving back. I, I really do. And I think whether it's doing things like that or just giving back to you all, you know, what I know and 
how I can help you all become successful. I think that's just so important. Um, I really do. You know, I, like I said, I remember the conversation I had with Marshall and I remember the person because I was very frustrated trying to find something. A person said to me, Hey, Scott, before you leave, we're having a company overview on Thursday. Why don't you show up? And I said, this is how frustrated I was. I said, who's going to be the big shot there? Just like that. And he goes, Marshall Whalen. I said, I'll show up. Spent 20 minutes with Marshall with a great conversation. And I, till this day, every time I see him, I said, you know, I appreciate you. He goes, I know, I know, because he was the one that I had that great conversation with and I'm here today. And one thing we can do for you, the one number one thing we can do for you or anybody is we give you that opportunity. What you do with that opportunity is up, with, up to you, but we'll be here. If you're wanting this, we're going to be here to help you with that opportunity. I truly mean that. Okay. Well, thank and you. I know it ran everybody over, which is typical. I apologize. That's all right. That's all right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, yeah. We're, we need to have you on the team call uh, more often. I rarely postponed it. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll have to put something together. Anytime. Anytime. You know, just let me know what's a good topic. What could help you? You know, y'all are new, right? So whatever topic, we'll we'll put it together and we'll have a good time with it. Yeah, help you out. Awesome. Very well, good. thank you. Thank You're you. You're so welcome. Thank okay. you, everybody, for having me on. I really appreciate it. And everyone, have a great weekend. And looking forward to seeing y'all at conference. I, can, I can't wait. Like I said, you see me, grab me. Yep. Thank you, Scott. Oh, you you're so welcome. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.